Hello and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. Today on this wintry snow day, I wanted to share with you um, an activity that you can plan to do next summer, and that's dye some yarn with natural materials. Um, today I'm going to start you off with a simple recipe for dyeing with jewelweed, fresh jewelweed, and um, I'll write out the, the complete steps uh, on the blog and share that with you, so don't worry about taking notes. Um, but the overview is that you're going to take your yarn and you're going to mordant it. And for wool, I use alum mordant. And um, a typical rule of thumb when using alum is that you want to use between 8 and 15% um, by weight of goods. And so I use a 10% um, because that makes the math really easy. So if you're doing a 100 grams of yarn, you're going to use... 10 grams of alum to do your mordanting, or if you're doing, you know, a thousand uh, grams of yarn, uh, you can scale up from there. Um, I typically do about eight skeins because that's what fits in my five gallon kettle um, easily. So that would be 80 grams of mordant. Um, and so you want to mordant the yarn ahead of time, and then you can either leave that soaking. Uh, in water overnight and use it the next day or you could actually dry that yarn once it's been mordanted and set it aside and then you'll have yarn ready to go um, when you're ready to dye. So on your dye day you want to soak out your yarn, make sure it's wet um, and while that's soaking you can collect your jewelweed. Um, jewelweed grows wild up here in New England. I'm pretty sure it grows in different parts of the country. Um, but maybe I'll include a little, uh, do some more research and include a little tidbit about where to find it um, in the US. And you can use the whole plant for this process. Um, it's a fairly leggy, kind of weedy looking plant. Um, it has a lot of dark green leaves on it and it doesn't have very many flowers. The flowers are small and they're kind of tangerine colored. Um, and that's the color that this plant gives on wool yarn. Um, but you, you can use the whole plant um, for a more intense color. Um, so when I'm harvesting, I just go out with a good pair of pruning shears and I chop off you know, a big bouquet of it um, and then bring it up to my dyeing area and trim it into about three inch pieces or so, just really roughly with the pruning shears. Um, cut it all up until I have a kettle full. Then I um, put warm water over that and then stick it on the on the heater to simmer. And I usually simmer it for about an hour and try to get it up to about 190 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or just under boiling. Um, I guess that would be about 90 to 95 centigrade. Um, and leave it there for a good hour, let that steep, let it extract all of the, the dye essence from the plant. And then you can strain that off so that you don't have chunks of plant matter in, um, in your yarn. And um, of course that's just boiled plant material at that point, so you can just compost that, um, won't hurt anything. And then um, add your yarn. Now if your, your dye bath is still really hot, I would soak your yarn in, in quite warm water um, before you put it into the dye bath in order to prevent shocking the yarn, which can cause it to felt slightly. Um, so, but just drop your yarn in gently, give it a nice gentle stir, and then let that simmer for about an hour as well to really take up the color. Um, I think jewelweed sets pretty quickly, so you'll notice it's starting to take up the, the, uh, the color and the, the dye liquid will start to fade a little bit as that color binds onto the yarn. Um, but, but let it cook for a good hour, again around that 180 to 190 mark, just a gentle simmer. And then what I like to do um, with all of my natural dyes is let them sit in the dye pot overnight to cool down rather than trying to you know for, take them out. Um, it just lets the dye, again, bind with the yarn a little bit more. Um, so turn off the heat, cover your pot, set it aside. You can then pack up your dye stuff and then just go check it in the morning and then rinse it out with cool water a couple of times. Um, I've noticed that jewelweed does bind pretty well and it's quite color fast, so you shouldn't have to rinse 
um, very much, maybe once or twice, just to get any excess color out, and then hang it in a shady spot to dry. Um, you always want to dry naturally dyed yarns um, away from direct sunlight, because sunlight will make them fade. The color can be very tender, especially right when they're first dyed. So, um, and then from there, just knit with it. Um, I showed a sock a couple of weeks ago that, that I had dyed with jewelweed, um, and I still need to knit the made of that sock. Um, but it's a lovely tangerine color. It also over dyes well. It sort of acts as a yellow almost, so you could over dye it with indigo and get a nice uh, green, or over dye with something like matter and get like a nice sunset sort of orange color. Um, and yeah, really easy. And if you can find it in your area, it's totally free too. So um, thanks for joining me for this little quick tutorial. Again, all the details of this recipe will be available on the blog. I'll link that in the show notes. And um, if you have any questions or if you try dyeing with jewelweed, um, please let me know. Leave a comment on this video and let me know how it turned out. Thanks for watching and join me next time for more tips and hints. Cheers.